Here it is, the video that everyone has been waiting for, and that's how much the Pacific Bin costs to build. The Pacific Bin is a 1,600 square foot, three bedroom, one and a half bath, Airbnb in Salton, Washington. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a full breakdown of all the construction costs, all the way from clearing the land, all the environmental, critical area studies, everything that went in to making this home become a reality. This video took me a really long time to put together from going through every single credit card statement to every single wire transfer that went out for the entire build process to give you guys a to the penny accurate build cost for the Pacific Bin. So it would really help me out a lot just liking this video and subscribing to my channel if this is content you guys enjoy watching because there's definitely gonna be more of it and the next builds are already in the process. So I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and let's dive into the full cost breakdown. So the very first step after acquiring the land was getting a critical area study. A critical area study pretty much tells you where you can build on your property. It tells you where the wetlands are, where any of the steep slopes are, um, which I have a whole other video breaking that down, the whole permitting process if you want a more deep dive. But the critical area study was $3,925. So once I found out roughly where all the critical areas are on site, I needed to locate the four corners of my lot so I'd be able to lay out exactly where the home goes. And that survey cost me $10,000, which before I hired the survey company, I roughly laid out based off of what Google Maps showed me and using the little blue dot that shows your GPS location. And it was crazy how accurate it was. It was accurate to within two feet. So for the next build, I'll know I won't have to do that again and I can just get close enough with Google Maps and save you $10,000, a little pro tip there. Now I knew with building the bin, I wanted it to be a fully permitted structure so that down the road, I would be able to pull equity out in it as it is recognized as a single family home here in Snohomish County. In order to do that, I had to have full structural and architectural plans and that cost me $10,700 to get engineered plans for the bin. There was a lot of structural reinforcement involved with all the cutouts we had, the way we stacked the bins. Containers aren't meant to be stacked perpendicular like you can see with this bedroom hanging out here. So we had to do some special engineering. There's all sorts of structural steel braces in the walls that had to be engineered. So both the engineering and the architectural plans, like the layout of how the home actually looks inside was $10,700 all in. So while we were working on the structural and architectural side of the plans, I was able to kick off the civil engineer, which all the civil engineer really does is come up for adequate drainage for the property. So whenever it rains, all that rainwater that hits the roof doesn't just drain right next to the home. So it actually goes out to an infiltration trench where it's able to seep back down into the ground and hit all the reservoirs and underground rivers. Um, so that's all that the civil engineering plans were. And those were $6,180. Once I had all those documents together, I was able to submit them to Snohomish County, which kicked off a really fun $9,924.11 fee to just review those plans, stamp them, and tell me I'm ready to go build. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. Before you get issued your building permit, you also need the health department to buy off on your septic design, which meant I needed a septic designer, and that cost me $3,000. The septic designer tells you where your drain field for your septic system, where your septic tanks, and where your well has to go, because your well and septic drain field have to be far enough apart that your poopy water isn't draining into your well water. Definitely don't want that. So once you get all of those steps put together, you can finally get issued your building permit. Now that I had my building permit in hand, I could finally start the construction process, which meant with the bin being a shipping container home, I could buy the boxes. So I bought all five boxes for just shy of $33,000, which checks out to be about $6,600. And a little pro tip, if you're buying shipping containers on the West Coast, make sure to buy right around Christmas time because that's when China ships in all sorts of toys and there's usually a surplus of boxes on the west coast so little another little pro tip there so it turns out that rock is very expensive all of this rock used here on the driveway it's a 500 foot long driveway and to stabilize the foundation cost me six thousand dollars which was way more than i had anticipated which also leads into my next cost which is rental equipment so doing most of this work on weekends and just taking random days off of work to rent bobcats and mini excavators to excavate for the foundation and everything cost me $7,400. 
So now that we had a driveway to be able to get heavy equipment back here, we could kick off one of the first big steps in construction, which was drilling the well. So the well goes down 260 feet and it cost us just shy of $22,000. And that also includes all of the pumping equipment that's inside the pump house here to be able to draw water up from that well and push it into the house. Which leads us to the next cost, which is the pump house, which my brother-in-law and I built, which cost us about $2,400 in pouring the little concrete foundation, the rock underneath, framing the whole thing, metal roof, and insulating the walls so that when it freezes in the winter, uh, the stuff inside, all the pumps and everything doesn't freeze. You see that little box right there? That box cost me $27,000, which sounds absolutely absurd to me, but there's only one power company out here and they can really charge what they want, which if you work for a power company and can explain that sort of ridiculous cost to me, please drop it in the comments below. I would genuinely love to hear. <laughs> that $27,000 pretty much includes the transformer and then running the lines from the street all the way down to my transformer and hooking it up to the meter here on the house. When doing shipping container construction, if you have a lot of large windows or you're stacking the boxes in a unique way, a lot of structural steel is actually needed to be able to reinforce the boxes because containers are natively intended to be stacked on the four corners. They're not intended to be stacked perpendicular like we have them here at the bin. So there's actually all sorts of structural steel reinforcements. There's four by four angle that makes up the windows. There's some huge C channel that are tucked inside these walls to be able to support the large overhang here. And there's all sorts of interior and beams on the rooftop to be able to support this unique design. All in all, my structural steel package cost me just over $20,000. At this point in the build, I actually built out my website. So with the home being a vacation rental that you can stay at, which if you do want to stay at the Pacific Bin, the links down below to the Airbnb or my direct booking link where you save about 5% off of Airbnb. Um, but I built out my Squarespace website, which cost me about $300 with the whole emailing campaign and everything that I'm able to do to utilize my own direct booking site. It sounded like it was a sponsor bit. It's not sponsored. I just genuinely love Squarespace. Um, so after that, I ended up building my foundation here. So I hired a contractor and it cost me $23,000. So the foundation, as it was designed in the structural engineering plans, is to have a two foot wide footing running all the way around the perimeter for the three boxes that sit on the first floor here and a four foot knee wall. So we actually have a four foot, or actually it's a little bit greater. It's almost like five foot crawl space underneath the bin to make it really easy for the electrician and the plumber to be able to run everything. And it turned out it was such a good decision making a large crawl space. It made everyone's job a lot easier and it could make servicing things if things ever need to be serviced way easier in the future. So now that I was starting to dive into construction, starting to cut out windows, weld everything, up I had to start ordering all the materials that would take a long time to get here which the hot tub was one of them and my budget estimate was way off on this I think I budgeted six thousand dollars and it turns out this saltwater seven person hot springs hot tub cost me seventeen thousand dollars this this one hurt but with the bin being a like really high-end luxury home I knew this was something I couldn't skimp on and end of the day i love this tub it is like it smokes any other chlorine tub out there and i love this thing so now we are starting to get to the fun numbers here which these numbers made me realize oh crap i am actually doing this the window and door package so for those of you that don't know you want to make sure to order your window and doors right off the bat because they typically take anywhere from three to six months i think mine took about four and a half months to get on site here so make sure you order your windows and doors as soon as you can and just know that they're gonna cost a lot. And mine cost $36,000 for all the windows and doors. Granted, there are tons of windows. The entire master bedroom is just surrounded with three sides of windows that just put you right in the forest. Um, but just know, <laughs> windows and doors are very expensive and that was a hard pill to swallow. Well, I was working on the home, welding on all the windows, getting everything set to be able to start framing and insulating. I kicked off the septic install team, which cost me $24,000. So that includes this drain field here, which you can't see, but all this was dug up they put a bunch of drain lines drain rock which this is ultimately where all the water from the three settling tanks is pumped out to and it drains down through the earth 
A few other things I had to order for the home, one being the Tesla wall charger for anyone that has a Tesla. This cost me $440, as well as the SpaceX Starlink satellite dish, which all in all cost me $2,200, which I know now they're like $500, but I ended up buying one on eBay for $1,500 because I wasn't sure if my reservation was gonna come available by the time the bin was launched. And then my reservation came available and I ended up spending another $500 to get a second one. So I've got a second Starlink all ready to go for the next build. After all the structural steel reinforcement of the bin had been completed, that kicked off the wood framing of the bin. So pretty much framing out all the walls, laying all the underlayment, and all of that lumber cost $6,700, which at the time was so expensive. Materials were up like two to three times what they were the year prior. Um, and I absolutely got my shirt taken from me on that one, but it is what it is. We had to get it done. So once framing had been completed, we could then kick off the electrician, which the electrician for the bin was just over $26,000 and my plumber was about $17,000 for the entire home. So when I was in the heat of construction, I was almost just taking bids and saying, yes, let's, let's go, let's just get it done because I knew I had to get this on Airbnb as soon as possible. So one of the trades that I felt like I sort of got taken on was the HVAC. So I have five of these mini split head units. There's two on the main floor, three upstairs, so one in each bedroom. And all in all, my HVAC cost me $28,000, which, Looking into it now, I got kind of ripped off. If you've been following the Pacific Bin on Instagram, you know that everyone had a heyday with this, but my deck all in all cost me about $26,000. That includes all the concrete for the footings, all the lumber for all the structural support underneath, as well as the timber tech decking, which was almost like $18,000 in itself. Now this decking will never go bad. You'll have to power wash it maybe once every seven or eight years, but you'll never have to worry about replacing it like a cedar deck. And all in all, we have almost a thousand square feet of deck space here. So there's so much outdoor area that really $26,000 seemed pretty fair to me. So the only gas appliance at the bin is actually the fireplace here. And the fireplace all in all is about $6,000. And that includes them coming out, installing the fireplace and hooking up all the gas lines. So with the home being an Airbnb, we wanted to make sure that the floors would be as durable as possible. And it turns out that Hickory is some of the most durable hardwood out there. So we went with real three quarter inch tongue and groove hardwood throughout the entire home, excluding the bathrooms, which have some matte black hexagon tile to meet the Scandinavian design theme. All in all, we were in $17,000 for the hickory wood flooring and the tile flooring in the powder room, the main bathroom, and also the steam shower upstairs. Arguably one of the coolest features about the bin is that we have two spiral staircases, one here in the main floor to get you to the bedrooms upstairs, and the other one on the exterior to get you between both of the decks. We are in about $15,000. Now I paid full price, I paid the full $15,000 for both of these, but after the fact, Iron Shop actually reached out and they said they would like to sponsor this full breakdown video, which their team was absolutely amazing to work with. I have nothing but praises to say about them from the accounting phase to them helping to walk me through the process of building this. With container construction being a little bit different than traditional construction, their team really helped to walk me through exactly what I needed to take into account since the floors aren't just a typical like nine foot ceiling like it would be in a normal home. I love the product. It is just super durable. It feels so solid and I mean, just look at it. It looks so stinking good. So some of the cool features about the bin is that we try to incorporate nature as much as possible by bringing some warm wood tones into the home. And between our Live Edge Island top here and the resin poured walnut dining room table, we're in about $9,000. Keep in mind that we did do a collaboration for the table, so it was a bit cheaper. A normal table like that would be in the like $20,000 range. We went with quartz countertops here at the bin to almost mimic concrete for that more industrial modern feel, which all in, it was about $10,000 for both the whole kitchen package here, the powder room, and the main bathroom upstairs. I feel like this video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna do some rapid fire running through some numbers of the not so sexy things. So for all the paint, including the exterior and the interior of the bin, we are in about $3,100.
The closed cell spray foam insulation cost was $19,500. And you do have to use a closed cell spray foam if you're doing shipping container construction. Otherwise, you're gonna have condensation problems with your insulation getting moist over time. So the closed cell actually bonds to the metal and creates that vapor barrier. There's a welding inspection, which was $432. I paid $400 in eye doctor appointments. There was actually two times throughout the build that I got a chunk of metal jammed in my eye and they had to go in. One time they scraped it out and the other time they had to take a little drill and drill it out because it was starting to rust in my eye. So that wasn't fun. Wear your safety glasses. I even was one of the times that still, still managed to get in there. My metal roof was $17,650 and I wanted to use a metal roof so I never had to worry about changing it down the road. It's just, it's a really bulletproof way to waterproof yourself for years to come so you don't have to worry about changing roofs in the future. So as for all of the soffits and overhangs at the bin, I used a product called Lux Architectural Products, which was about $11,500 installed. Uh, the product was actually about $7,000 and the install made up the rest of that. And the product is so cool. It looks just like wood. I've had so many people being like, wow, where'd you get that wood? It looks so cool. But it turns out it's actually just printed metal. The drywall was $11,500. My propane tank that feeds the fireplace was $126. I just bought it at Lowe's. The glass door that leads to the steam shower was about $2,100. So my blower door inspection, which was $400, which pretty much explaining what a blower door inspection is, is they pressurize your home and see how much it leaks. So like the little joints in the doors and there's a certain threshold you have to hit per building code. The asphalt entrance to the bin, which this one kind of frustrated me is because all my neighbors have rock driveways out here, um, but per building code, the first 20 feet of your driveway out here has to be asphalt so that you're not tracking rocks onto the county roads, which it makes sense, but still eating an extra $3,350 was pretty frustrating, especially right at the end. For all the furniture in the home, we ended up right around $14,000. Keep in mind that if you're doing this yourself, it's most likely is gonna be a little bit more than that. As the Instagram size of the bin grew to be 750,000 people, a lot of furniture vendors were willing to work with the bin, give heavily discounted prices. Love Sack provided like a $12,000 couch in the living room for free just for a few Instagram posts. So please keep that in mind if you're doing this yourself. Furnishings will probably be quite a bit more. The last big expense I have on here is for $31,000 and that's my small tools and equipment. So that's whenever I needed nails or nail guns, drills, welders, propane tanks, pretty much anything that's involved with small tools that would go into assisting me in the build process. All in, the total cost of construction was $542,451.92. Sorry, I added everything up wrong when I was filming, so back to the video. Which sounds so crazy to me, spending that sort of money on a home like this, but it really does pencil out. So with the total build cost, plus the property, it checks out to be about $750,000, which this home could resell right now for around a million dollars. So in all the sweat equity that my friend's family and I poured into this home, we've generated about $250,000 of equity if we were to sell it tomorrow. Please keep in mind that the cost of construction here in Washington is significantly more than most other areas of the country. That's my total all-in cost breakdown video. That really took me a long time to go through all these numbers, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys can like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want more breakdowns. I'm gonna be giving all sorts of breakdowns on how my Airbnb is doing. And if you wanna stay at the bin, I'll drop a link below. And I really appreciate you guys supporting me in that way. So I'll see you guys in the next video next Saturday.